The Buckeyes have now won eight in a row against the Wolverines, 15 of the last 16. I think Jim Harbaugh as an elite coach is a total fraud and charade. He no longer has that ability, and I am going to quit trying to prop him up. He no longer is elite. Wolverine Nation, Ohio State is vanquished. The Wolverines are going to win this one. 45 to 23, Michigan. Don't cut it to come back. Do we really have to talk about this Michigan comeback story today, Shay? I mean, Shay's here. I mean, we could wait till Michigan's actually playing in the Final Four and Ohio State is home for the holidays watching Michigan on TV. But you know what? Let's do it right now. Today's comeback is about Michigan football taking the reins back in that one rivalry from your Ohio State Buckeyes 5-0. And former Michigan great Taylor Lewan is here to gloat about it a bit. That's fun, right? I'm not looking forward to this. But we also got TCU comeback story nobody saw coming. And also OBJ coming back to New York from Wondery. I'm Ryan Shazier. And I'm Dave Damashek. And this is Don't Call It A Comeback. Don't call it a comeback. I've been waiting on this moment my whole life. Can't call it a comeback. Everybody see your feet make arenas ride. Yeah, I'm saying from the left to right. We get it on tonight. We do it all, but we don't back down. Just give me one shot, one chance, I'ma take it. Fixing up the game, but these records I keep on breaking. Break it. Hi, right, Shay. Let's get into this Michigan comeback. Don't be so down, 5-0. Get that puss off your face and out of your voice. You and your Buckeyes did, after all, help create the drought Michigan is just now coming back from. They hadn't won in Columbus since the year 2000 when you were just eight years old. How about that? But let's back up even further to understand the magnitude of this moment for Michigan. The rivalry has typically been evenly balanced since the 1800s with superstars on both sides of the ball, guys like Tom Brady. I don't think he played in the 1800s, but pretty close. Also, Charles Woodson, Desmond Howard, Eddie George, Archie Griffin, and of course, you, Ryan Shazier. Straight ahead, nowhere, driven back by Ryan Shazier. As Shazier knows firsthand, the century-old rivalry has been very one-sided in this millennium, the 2000s. Yeah, I'll just let you know, we are 17-2 and two before Ohio State lost to Michigan last year. Most importantly, the Buckeyes had won eight in a row from 2012 to 2019. The last six Michigan losses came under head coach Jim Harbaugh. So, of course, by 2019 and that loss, he faced all sorts of criticism. There's something in Jim Harbaugh's brain. I don't know what it is. I don't really want to know. He is incapable, incapable of beating his biggest rival. And not surprisingly, soon there were calls to fire Harbaugh. Not only is he not able to win the playoff game, my guy can't beat Ohio State. You have one job to do if you're Harbaugh. you got to beat Ohio State. But Harbaugh finally broke through with a big win in the big house in 2021, likely saving his job. Michigan defeats Ohio State 42-27. to But that win made the game even more important this year. Harbaugh still had to prove last year wasn't a fluke and win in Columbus. His team was up to the test, as it turns out. Ohio State has more pro prospects. I I would dare say that. They might even have the better team. But Jim Harbaugh is Ryan Day's daddy right now. They got dominated on their home field. The most points Michigan has scored in this building since 1956. How about that? Okay, Shazier, so the Wolverines beat your Buckeyes, then planted a giant Michigan flag in the middle of your field. The thing is, I understand that we've been beating up on y'all, but do we have to be disrespectful? I mean, I don't know if they had to. They just did it for for pleasure's sake. For more on Michigan's resurgence, a two-time All-American of Michigan who was drafted in the same first round as our guy Ryan Shazier, here he is, Titans Pro Bowl lineman and host of Bussin' with the Boys, Taylor Lewan who just so happened to be in Columbus for that big win last weekend. I expect Michigan to win in Columbus for the first time in a very, very long time. 20 long years have passed. Last year, Ohio State came into Ann Arbor with hopes and dreams of making it yet to another college football playoff. They had one loss. They thought to themselves, they're one-sided. They can only run the ball. There's nothing else they can do. They can't beat us in the ground. Michigan wins that game. Ohio State fans look, they say, look, the only reason why they won is Hassan Haskins, 250 plus yards, five touchdowns. The weather was terrible. We need to toughen up. We need to beef up. We're going to fire this guy, bring a new guy in, and we are going to be ready 
For the boys in blue in Columbus, Ohio, there's no chance they beat us. They haven't beat us. Terrell Lewan never beat us in Columbus. And then we go in there with our best player injured. Our, our two best, Whatever I, it is. Hey, hey, we have three players injured too. I'm not trying to hear that either. Not your uh, best player though. Yeah, yeah, not, our, three, our best player was injured. Jackson Smith and Jacob is our best player. Is Jackson uh, Smith, had, is that the wide receiver that got hurt yes. in week one? Yes. <laughs> He's the one that's opting out because he doesn't believe in the tradition of the game? Oh, my gosh. Here you go. Here you go. That is a tough – listen, I, I want to say I know I came in here a little hot. Obviously, Ryan, I have a tremendous amount of respect for you, sir. Playing against you in Columbus, playing against you in the NFL, watching the adversity you went through and coming through, being an absolute stallion, and those that people can look up to, you are an incredible individual. I don't want to take away from that. No, I, I don't want to take away one bit, it. but I think we can all be happy. We can all be glad that the rivalry, the game itself is finally back. And unfortunately it had to happen like this to hey. Ohio state. Hey, Taylor. It had to happen, brother. Taylor. I'm going I'm to let you, I'm going to let you have your roses, you know, but I'm still not calling you by your name. I'm still not showing the M's. So you, you can, you can have that, you know, y'all got, y'all got two wins out of the last 20 years. That's cool with me. You know? Wait, can I jump in for a second, Shazy? I just want to clarify. It's not the Roses that Michigan gets this year. That's the consolation prize. Ohio State yeah. may get to go play in the Rose Bowl. Michigan's getting to play for the national championship. Hey, I Shazy, go, please, yeah, back out. Uh, I just, want, I just yeah. want to let you know that I was just watching ESPN, Fox, and whatever other college football thing. It says that we have a 71% chance of making the college playoffs in TCU and – uh, USC have like a 19%. So Isn't that you, wild? So, hey, talk all your mess all you want. We right. might be planning you in a national championship, and we will whoop some tail that day. I promise I you don't, that. Listen, I, love, <laughs> I, I would love the fact, from, speaking from a guy who was in the Big Ten, and knowing that SEC is God, there's, nothing, there's no way we can get around that type of situation. Yeah. They have owned the college football landscape for longer than I believe you and I have both been alive. If Ohio State gets in the playoffs, kudos. You guys get your first crack at Georgia, and we'll let you know. We'll finish them off for you when the, when the national championship. <laughs> yeah, get out of here. Out we here. need this. Here's here's what I hope happens. Here's what I think is going to happen. Unfortunately, I think Ohio State's not going to make the playoffs. I think USC is going to win. TCU is going to win. And then, crazy enough, the Big Ten championship game championship game is a trap game for Michigan. They're going to beat Purdue. Georgia's obviously going to handle the uh, the SEC. Now. Here's what we need to do. This is where we play the long game. We're in a Game of Thrones type of situation. We got to join together as brothers. We need. Every, <laughs> I know. I know. Just stick with me, brother. I'm gonna. I'm gonna land this plane. I promise. Everybody in the Big Ten. I'm talking Michigan State. I'm talking Ohio State, Purdue, Illinois. Every single one out there. We need to band together and support the Big Ten. I don't need you to support Michigan. I need you to support the Big Ten so that we can reclaim our dominance in the NCAA. Once that happens, now Ohio State looks a whole lot better. You guys could have, oh, we would have won the Natty if we would have beat Michigan. Every single team, Northwestern, who went 1-11, their only game was off American soil. They look better. As long as we can do those things, we can go back to hating each other as soon as the national championship's over. But, buddy, if you guys don't get in, we need the Big Ten. We need every single person that listens to this podcast, and I'm sure you have an outstanding following. I need you guys to go and – Put your hey, vote of confidence towards I'm, Michigan. I'm telling you right now, every single person in Ohio is dying on their sword. We're not, <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're not backing you guys. I just, I just understand. I, I root for the Big Ten, obviously, but and obviously, I want the Big Ten to win. But I just, I, I can't see people in Ohio cheering for you guys to win the next championship. You guys are weirdos. I don't understand people who root for entire college conferences. I went to <laughs> Indiana University, and I'm not going to root for either one of you. Uh, but, um. Lawan, you know, Army-Navy is upcoming, and you always hear this about any big rivalry game. It doesn't matter what happens the rest of the season as long as we beat our chief rival here. That's only really true for Army and Navy. But how far does it go to making an otherwise mediocre season successful if you just beat Ohio State? Or is it still bigger to get the natty than it is to win the head-to-head? I think it's, I mean... It depends what category you're in in college football. I think there's a tier system to everything, right? You got the you got your Georgias uh, up until this year, Clemson, Alabama, LSU has been in there. Ohio State won a national championship in 2014, which, by the way, I saw you out there. You looked fantastic, Ryan, uh, during the game, and it was good to see the boys out there. Um, but I think that it just depends on where you are in the tier system, and so 
Where Michigan's at right now, they're they're going to win their second Big Ten championship. That's outstanding. But now it's about how do you take that next step? And then obviously you want to win the national championship. Army Navy is Army Navy. Listen, I support and love the troops. I back them all the way. But we're we're talking about national championships now. <laughs> and if you want to be like you can, if you can, we could have lost to Ohio State and somehow found our way in the playoffs and won a national championship. You're not going to look. You're not going to sit there and go, "Oh, the season was a failure." There's no question. The boys are getting rings. They're living the dream. That's what it is. I think that uh, last year that was the case, right? Like you're you're happy to be in the college football playoffs. You know Georgia's got every first round draft pick on offense, defense, and special teams. It just wasn't going to happen for them. I think this year, I if you would have asked me before this Ohio State game if if Ohio if Michigan is Going could win a national championship. I would say there's probably no chance. We're two one sided football team. We're we're clock management. You use the play action to help out your run game type of situation. Some movement passes here and there, and then play solid defense, and then don't mess up on special teams. That's kind of like the game plan of Michigan. What we saw in Columbus, Ohio, on Saturday was nothing short of it, it amazed all of us as Michigan fans, as an alum sitting there and watching that with J, uh, JJ being able to have three touchdowns and rush for a touchdown. The only, I mean, it became a blowout at the end. I'm going to give flowers where flowers is due. Columbus, Ohio is an incredible place. I thought I was going to be in a situation where I was waking up beaten with bars of soap when I, when I first stepped in the spot. <laughs> and now I can really realize that people, they're good people out there. And the rivalry just runs so deep for some. It's always at f- those five percenters. So yeah. I think, uh, I think now Michigan actually has a chance. Georgia's not as good as they were last year. TCU people have been sleeping on them. The the TCU is year. trash. They're, I don't think TCU is going to win this game. But I'm, we're so? gonna, no, I, I, I think one of the two are going to lose. USC or TCU is going to lose. We're going to figure it out, but they're going to lose. And I'm not saying that just because I want Ohio State to win. This whole season, like, this is the one thing I can say about this season. Georgia, Ohio State, and the team of North, we have been beating everybody else pretty bad besides each other. You know, and, and y'all beat us by 22, so y'all beat us pretty bad. Mm-hmm. The, TCU and USC, pretty much every game they've been in has been a nail biter. You know, so it's just like to me, that's why. And, and, and they already lost to the team that they played. So I, it's it, you know, so I I feel like one of those teams are going to are going to lose. But one thing I gotta say, uh, Taylor was on the last team to beat you know Ohio State in the last 20 years and he understands like what it's like to not be in a national championship consideration and beat Ohio State though and when you're in that when you're in that type of situation when you're when I when I was at Michigan the whole thing was hey we got to win the rivalry games like we're trying to win a Big Ten championship we didn't have we didn't have the talent to go do those types of things looking back on it when you're in it you're drinking the Kool-Aid you legit think to yourself oh we could win it all this year and then you look back at the talent you have and you're like well we probably we probably couldn't have done that and so, yeah, I think I think Michigan slowly putting themselves back into relevance, which full circle helps the Big Ten. It helps everybody in the conference. It makes you guys look better if we do well in the in the college football playoffs. If we're talking from the the way I'm talking, yeah. is Ohio State doesn't make the college football playoffs. Yeah, no, it definitely would make the it would definitely make it better for our conference if you know we win another championship for our conference. But I just can't see us rooting for you. But the thing is, I want to ask you, Taylor. Like, I understand, and I'm not trying to like talk smack or anything. I understand in the last 20 years, you know, we beat you guys 17 out and you guys beat us three. But do you feel like it's going a little bit too far playing the flag in the middle of the field? I can fully understand why that would be a question you would ask me being on the reciprocating end of having a flag <laughs> in the field. I fully get that. I, would it be going too far when Woody Hayes went for two and they were up by multiple touchdowns against Michigan back in the day and they asked why he went for two and he said because I couldn't go for three? Would it be the, over the top? The game is, the game is different, dude. Way back when, went and pulled down the, the Go Blue banner before the game started. The answer to all of that is absolutely not. I believe <laughs> in a scrappy, over-the-top, disrespectful rivalry. I think it makes college football so much better and makes the wins so much greater. I think when you guys do eventually win someday, which I don't like, we can talk about the landscape of where college football is going, and I think it's going to be a – a big changer where Ohio state Michigan could actually play three times in a season, but you guys beating us the next time that happens, hopefully for me in a long, a long time from now, I hope it's disrespectful. I hope it's rude. I hope you guys are giving birds to all the fans as you are walking up the tunnels <laughs> and doing horrible things. Cause I think it just makes 
the rivalry that much more. That's what it was in the 90s. That's what it was in the early 2000s. Then you guys just started running away like crazy with the whole thing. It's like, well, we're kind of just trying to play catch up at this point, right? So I, I fully understand why that is seen as disrespectful. And as an Ohio State fan, being like, that's rude. That's classless. Yeah, the classic S-U, uh, S-C-U and then capital U-M, the scum, you know, that, that whole thing that all the messages <laughs> are like to do. But I think it plays beautifully into what the game is, and that's the greatest rivalry in college sports. That's Dude. right. See, Shazier, you can't be doing this jersey swap <laughs> jive anymore out on the – look at all those jerseys Dude. behind them, Luan. It's a, I don't care for that stuff. Do that Taylor, in the bowels Taylor of the stadium, a, out of Taylor eyesight of the public. So, Taylor, I'm going to be completely honest. And based off of what you said earlier is why I did not like you when you were at, at Michigan. And the yeah. reason I say that is because you want, because <laughs> it's like, I like to be disrespectful. I like to be, you know, I like to the, the, the pick the bird off the people. And I didn't start liking Taylor until we started training together. Yes, for the NFL I remember. Draft. <laughs> I didn't start liking him until we started training together for the NFL draft. Taylor, like, how do you feel that Coach Harbaugh was able to turn everything around for the Wolverines? Because he went from, hey, uh, we might fire, to, fire this guy to now, you know, he's one of the best coaches in college football and he's beating his rival. Uh, the last I'll put the years. quotations around the best. Uh, <laughs> um, I think this is a classic stay the course and let your guy get his guys in there and, and figure out the culture of the team type of situation. Listen, a year, a year ago, two years ago, during COVID year, when they were, it was like a six game season, they went like two and four. I'm over there on bus with the boys trying to make headlines saying, Hey, we got to get rid of Harbaugh. Everybody wanted Harbaugh. When I was in, when I was at Michigan, Rich Rodriguez was the head, my first head coach. He gets fired. We want Harbaugh. Brady Hope comes in. He gets fired. We want Harbaugh. They finally get Harbaugh. And it kind of seems like, are they really doing anything? Are they really going to be like what Michigan's always wanted them to be? I think they've done a fantastic job of staying the course and Harbaugh playing an extremely talented game of chess with the University of Michigan to put himself in a position that he is now, taking a pay cut last year. Now, then in the offseason, saying, hey, is he going to go to Minnesota? Is he going to go to the NFL? Now, all of a sudden, Michigan's paying this man. And I think he's done a phenomenal job of knowing the game within a game from a coaching standpoint to stay in Ann Arbor and now bring these guys in. I think the world's his oyster at this point. You go 12-0. and 0, Let's say they lose the Big Ten Championship. Let's say they lose the bowl game after they lose the Big Ten Championship. What an incredible year for the University of Michigan to go 12-0. and 0. That's unbelievable. And that will always that'll forever go down in history. And that's something he can really put his name on. You guys got us last year. You guys got us this year. And I want to make a proposition. So it, the next time we play each other, the next time you have a podcast or you come on our podcast, you have to wear Ohio State gear, and I'll do the same. That sounds like a plan to me, buddy. I'm, I'm 100% about that. Do you really think Ohio State's going to win this next year? Yes, 100%. We're not, not going to have Stroud. Guys. And our two star running backs that are both out this game. We had our our, our starter running back this game was a linebacker. Oh, oh, he was a linebacker. Oh. Number nineteen he did was a line. <laughs> he was a linebacker. But at the end of the day, great. no. But, but Taylor, man, I I wish you the best for the. I know you all for the rest of the year, but uh, I wish you the best, man. And uh, what do you expect for your comeback, man? I'm not sure, man. I'm in, I'm in a big uh, point of life and, and evaluating right now. You got two ACLs in three years. It's obvious. When you play in this game long enough, you know what that's going to look like, and I, I'll probably get released by the Titans in, uh, after the season. And once that happens, it's like sit down, find some suitors, and see where home's going to be next. Yeah, I know a nice place for you. Where is and that? Me and both, me and Dave both uh, love this city. <laughs> Pittsburgh, so. PA? You want Lawan on the banks of the Three Rivers there? Hey, he's, he's one of the greatest uh, tackles in the game. He just unfortunately got hurt. I unfortunately got hurt, you know, I'm out of the game, but Taylor still can play. I love it. That would be, that would be a fantastic addition for uh, for one Ken Pickett in his sophomore year. But before we get to 2023, let's at least stay till early or very early January 2023 and uh, the last week of of this year. What if? Do you guys like the idea, Lawan? You go first on this. Obviously, Shazier would support this. Ohio State gets that four seed. You joke about that. They could take down Georgia. Do you like the idea of Michigan v. Georgia for the Natty? Or do you like Ohio State v. Michigan for the for the Natty? Be fun. Yeah, that'd be cool. You would like it? <laughs> would you like that? I wouldn't want I wouldn't want them getting a second shot at me if I were if I were in your seat. No, you know what? Um you get Michigan, you play you wait a month. 
Ohio State's got to play Georgia, which is the best team in college football right now until proved otherwise. Michigan beats TCU, we're going to assume on that. And then Ohio State has a massive upset against Ohio State. It doesn't come without some, in, not injuries, but it doesn't come out some wear and tear. You know what I'm saying? That's a big physical so you, team. So y'all, y'all not going to have wear and tear versus TCU? Yeah, <laughs> uh, not, not bruisers. TCU ain't bruisers <laughs> like that. You get uh, you get corn back. I'm taking those odds, bud. I think it'd be outstanding. Ohio State, Michigan for the national championship. Not only would that be incredible for the rivalry, two games, which I think we might even go to three games starting in 2024 when you go to 12 game season, and then we ditch this East West BS and just go to uh, just the way the Big Ten used to be. I think that'd be incredible. I would love that. I think that'd be awesome. But the hate would be stronger than ever. I think that'd be the best part. <laughs> Flags would be planted everywhere. Every every touchdown, there'd be a flag planted by each team. Ah, oh, you're going to give Shazier the vapors all over again. He didn't like that flag on his home field, I Luan. No, I, I think the thing is, it's just people are starting to follow, follow people. Baker was the first to do it. And now, you know, now everybody else just want to follow Baker's suit. You see how Baker ended up. Yeah, that's true. So, hey, y'all want to follow Baker footsteps? Be my guest. <laughs> hey, that should be the bet. One or the one or the other, you has to plant the flag on the other's field. That's that's a good bet for next yeah, year. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, in like the meantime, that's not like getting hey, arrested over here. I also I like Shay Zier's to... idea. You wear some black and gold in 2023. You you know you help out. You tutor while you're also anchoring the the line. You also tutor up the youngsters there. That's a that's a good plan for everybody involved there. Meantime, make sure you're checking out one of the best podcasts, not just football but podcasts. Period. Bussing with the boys with Taylor Lewan. Very funny. stuff stuff appreciate, appreciate that, you friend. man appreciate and, you guys and, and congratulations again say say something nice shazier that's nice before he leaves I, i'm not i'm not <laughs> congratulating him on beating us all right that's i i i thought you like rivalries dave like i love rivalries but you're the one belly aching about being feeling disrespected this is the your chance to extend an olive branch instead of a flag you understand dave, I've, I've never lost to the rave i never lost to anybody and said hey good job on beating me and that's not i'm not doing that that's just not yeah. who i am <laughs> that's a fair that's a fair statement he okay. made here's what i'll say about this thank god the rivalry's back because it, re- yeah, it was lost for a while i agree i agree it makes the game better it really does you should just cut him off shazier just like don't give him any dignity just broom him. just show him the door just cut him off before he's still t- I, I mid-sentence hope, i hope if the i hope Michigan wins, but if a Michigan doesn't win next year, I hope I get a text from Ryan and it's so disrespectful and it's so <laughs> rude and over the top. No, I'm no, gonna, that's I'm not me. It and I'm gonna move on about my business. Like, yes, no, I <laughs> deserve that. I might, I might I just give you, I might absolutely. just give you like a, a thumbs up or you know the uh, the Seki's just better luck next year. Doormat. Yeah, <laughs> that would be outstanding. <laughs> that would be incredible, dude. It makes it, it makes it so much better. Wow, oh, I think we all Appreciate agree. You. Go Michigan, right, Shazier? No question. Go, go get them oh, in the yeah. Final Four for the glory of the Big Ten. Root for the Big go, Ten. No, go, no. go Hoosiers. No. Well, yeah, that's right. I'm not going to root for the teams that beat me up. If a bully beats me up, I'm not rooting to see him go out and beat up other people. I want to see him get beaten up by a bigger bully. That's yeah. why I want to see that the Big Ten bullies get beaten up by Georgia or whoever. Else. Anyway, listen, Juan's going to go now. You and I have some business to attend to. Okay, Shazier? All right. Boys, I appreciate, appreciate you. you. Have a great day. Thank you. you too, man. Appreciate you. Bussin' with the boys on Barstool. Make sure you check that one out. Y'all caught it to come back. Let's move on here. It's time for some other comeback stories in the news. We need to talk about here, 5 This is the check down. All right, we're talking about him. TCU is the third-ranked team in the nation, and the Horn Frogs have QB Max Duggan to thank for that. Duggan came back from heart surgery in 2020, lost the starting gig this offseason, then came back again to reclaim the job. Now he's one of three finalists for the Davy O'Brien Award, along with C.J. Stroud and Caleb Williams. 5-0, make the case for Duggan over the others. So the reason I feel Duggan can make a, a difference this year is because they were 5-7 and seven last year. Obviously, he lost his job came back and won his job and now they're 12 and 0 in the Big 12 championship and fighting for a national championship uh spot. You know, he he's him and Quentin Johnson who is one of the best receivers in the country. They have a a great relationship and he just overcome so many odds and I think this team had just, you know, followed him and he just took the lead and that's why 
you know, TCU is one of the best teams in the country. I don't know what they do. Is this what they do with the Horn Frog? I think that's what it looks like. Either way, yeah, Duggan would. It's weird to think he would get the Heisman had Caleb Williams fallen on his face against the Irish last Saturday night. Now it seems pretty clear cut that it's going to be Williams, but a great story there from the TCU kid. Moving on, Commander's running back Brian Robinson had the best game of his career last Sunday going over 100 yards and for a touchdown just three months after he got shot four times in the leg. 5-0, forget the physical comeback. How hard is it to come back mentally and otherwise from being in a hospital in preseason with gunshot wounds? So I, I don't understand what it's like to have a gunshot wound, but I understand what it's like to be out of the game of football for a long period of time and then trying to come back and be at the same speed. So with him getting shot, obviously he had to go from moments where he wasn't 100% and then getting back to where he was at. And getting back to where, where you were at is one of the most difficult things because you can be 100% healthy, but if you're mentally don't think that you can do the things that you once were able to do, you're not going to be able to do them. And just to see that Brian Robinson comes out here, gets 100 100 yards rushing, uh, a touchdown, and just helping the commanders get into a position to be a playoff contender, it just shows you the type of mindset that Brian Robinson has and the type of belief that his team have and just – all the positivity that they were pouring into this guy to let him know that he can still be the same guy. So comebacks always, they have to have some type of positivity moment in it to feel that you can make it back to where people never thought you would be. And Brian Robinson, he definitely has the mental capacity to get back to where he had to be. And that's why he's doing so well. It's a great story for him personally. It's a good story for Washington overall that what they're doing with what's going on at the ownership level, that mess um, yeah, great stuff. In the offseason, we should do, is there going to be a comeback story for Carson Wentz? Because it doesn't look like he's in the long-term plans there. Let's talk about Odell Beckham Jr. He was in the middle of a career resurgence with the Rams, you'll recall, and during the Super Bowl, tore his ACL. Now Odell is almost recovered. A lot of suitors, high end, maybe deep uh, January runs upcoming for some of the suitors for him. Can OBJ come back to the Big Apple? Can he sign with the Giants? Would that make any sense? And is any of it possible after what happened last weekend when he was taken off an airplane, murky, exactly what went on there, but they threatened to unload the entire plane if he didn't get off. So strange stuff there. But where does Odell fit in 2022 NFL, if at all? So I know a lot of teams want him. Odell is one of the best receivers when he's healthy. And he might not be top five, but he's top 10, top 15. And top 15 receivers make a huge impact on the game. So I think he could definitely make a comeback to the Giants. But the thing that's kind of weird with me when it comes to the Giants situation is that he left on bad terms with the ownership. So with him leaving on bad terms with ownership, that's what makes it questionable for a comeback for him to the Giants. So that's why I think somebody like Dallas or another team or the Bills will be a better suit for Odell because, you know, I know that the Giants, they're more they're one of the teams that's more willing to deal with controversy from a player. While when you formally just left a team, you know, sometimes when you burn a bridge, it's a lot harder to cross it or a lot harder to get back on to the bridge when, you know, uh, the relationships that you have aren't on the same page. So I think that's the one question that he has possibly with the uh, Giants. But I, I I think he's he's more likely going to end up at the Cowboys or the Bills. And, you know, whenever you add more baggage into your garbage bag, it makes more questions. And, you know, the morals, they already left him kind of questionable. And then he gets in this type of trouble. They might say, hey, Jerry, you can have him or he can go to the Bills and you guys can deal with that. We already know what type of dude he is. So uh, I, th I think he can make a comeback. I think he can make an impact on wherever he ends up. But it, it just depends on what the ownership is willing to deal with. Because when you bring Odell, you bring a lot of uh, eyes with him. So Odell can just be sitting in his car with his seatbelt unbuckled. There's going to be tabloids and millions of people trying to figure out what's going on. And, you know, I don't. it just depends on who's willing to deal with that. Well, I think we know the answer to that. America's team is the fit there. I mean, listen, 
Terrell Owens didn't plan a flag. He planted himself right in the middle of the Dallas Cowboys star right there in their stadium. And they still made him a Dallas Cowboy. So I think Odell Beckham makes sense there to position a need for a team that's coming on here with Dak Prescott and company. Look out for those Dallas Cowboys against those Miami Dolphins, as a matter of fact. Um, Shazier, the U.S. men's national team, has made a big comeback to the World Cup. They are through their group here. They have vanquished Iran 1 0, not 1 0, 1 0. To be clear, have you caught a case of football fever? So I'm already a fan of football in general and football, football, but I'm, I'm kind of I'm kind of like Peyton Manning in, in the Lays commercial. I'm rocking more with soccer. It's called soccer, you know, but I have been having some soccer football fever and I have been watching every single game that we've been playing in and I'm really excited to see how our team is playing. They're one of, they've been they're one of the youngest teams, their third youngest team in the World Cup. We made it to the groups we made it out of the group stage. Now we're in the round of 16. And once you're in the round of 16, it's a possibility that anybody can win. And the, the biggest thing that I'm really excited about or but I'm really worried about is that we just have to make sure that Pulisic is healthy. If Pulisic is healthy and he's back at 100% when we play the Netherlands, man, I think we can go as far as these guys believe we can go. And, you know, I'm really excited because, you know, we missed it uh, four years ago and it's been eight years and it's a lot of pressure on these guys. And But I still believe that we can do it. Seemed like he did get a boot in the football, right? If I, if I saw that correctly. We'll see. Maybe Pulisic will advance. Not fully intact, but go get those Dutch on behalf of the U.S. of A. Rockstar Games has offered a tentative release date for the highly anticipated Grand Theft Auto 6. Fans are not happy, though, 5-0. The release date is in 2024. At that point, it'll be 11 years since the last game came out. Is GTA ever going to make its comeback? So, Dave, this this is all I gotta say. I know that you don't really play video games, but I'm a video gamer, and GTA is one of the games that I play with my brother. My brother's a little bit younger than me, but we play the video game pretty much every day uh, together um, in some type of capacity. And GTA is one of those games that we love playing. So I definitely feel like it's going to make a comeback. It's making the comeback a lot longer than we want it to be, and just just so you have a kind of idea about this. So the last time that NCAA came out was 10 years ago. And the last time GTA came out was 11 years ago. And now both of them are planning on coming out in 2024. And I think it's been way too long for any of us to have to wait to play these games that we love so much. GTA is one of the greatest games of all time. NCAA is one of the greatest games of all time. The Rock went home to Hawaii and shot a video of himself at a 7-Eleven he used to steal candy bars from. In the video, he bought every Snickers bar in the store to repay for stealing them as a kid. 5-0. Any childhood screw-ups you want to admit to here? Listen, th- this is this is a safe space here. This doesn't go anywhere beyond you telling me. Yeah, this is a very safe space. And I'm, I'm going I'm to tell you all something that I did when I was very young. And that I'm definitely not proud of it. But I did it, and, you know, it's, it's over with now. Uh, one time when I had an Xbox, I had traded my Xbox with another guy. But he didn't know we traded it. My, we, went on a co- we went on, like, a college tour in high school. And, I, and my, Xbox wasn't, my Xbox wasn't working. And so I went into his room, swapped my Xbox for his Xbox, and then, you know, and act like everything was Is okay. Is that a trade then? Do you think you're using uh, the right word there? It, it was an illegal swap. Okay. So okay. It, it was an illegal swap. But then I ended up going to his house probably about like a week and a half later, and the Xbox ended up working. So if you really think about it, I didn't do anything wrong, hmm. you know, and God handled the situation the right way. But uh, unfortunately, I needed to, I you know, that, that was wrong by me. And I still think about that to this day, and I'm not that type of person. So it really it really affects me to this mm-hmm. day because I – it almost felt like I stole from somebody, and I and I definitely it, am not a stealer. It is. It is. Well, no, you definitely are a stealer. I mean, I've been. I mean, you remember the I'm, draft? I'm a stealer, right? But I don't. You're not a. I don't. I don't. I, I'm not a thief. Okay. Okay. Good. Good clarification on that one. Hey, Shazier. Great times. Great thanks to Taylor Lewan for joining us again. Make sure you check out his very good podcast, Bussin' with the Boys and Shazier. We'll be back next week, believe it or not, with more great comeback stories. 
All right, Shaq, I would say that it was fun talking about Ohio State losing to Michigan, but it, it really wasn't. But, hey, for everybody that's watching the, the show or listening, hey, make sure to follow, rate, and review on whatever you're listening on. And check us out on YouTube on the Wonder Channel. And hit the subscribe button so you don't miss on any episode. So, see you all next week. And peace out. Don't call it a comeback. I've been waiting on this moment my whole life. You can't call it a comeback. Everybody to your feet, make arenas ride. Yeah, I'm saying from the left to right. We get it on tonight. We do it all, but we don't back down. Just give me one shot, one chance, I'ma take it. Fixing up the game, but these records I keep on breaking.